I'm sure my audience knows who this young lady is. Her name is Abby Martin. She is one of the last few true journalists on the planet. She has spent the better part of the last decade or so around the world exposing corporate fascism, masking itself as just healthy business interest, promoting the engine of freedom, for lack of a better term. Now, I have spoken at length on my Patreon channel, talking about psychological operations, about the concept known as binary thinking, where when I say things like that, people automatically think, oh, dear somebody else who would have voted for Hillary, oh my gosh, the demon rat, Hitlery, Killery, blah, 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 nonsense. Now, I'm going to show you where this picture is from, and you tell me. Can you read that hashtag there to the right? I'll see if I can pan over and zoom in for you. See, now, I'm sure that's going to confuse a lot of people. It's like, well, wait a minute. How can she be um, exposing big business and also be against Hillary? It's because, believe it or not, not everyone in the world thinks like we do here in America. People like the current administration and the person he was running against are seen as one and the same through most of the world. They're called neoliberals, and it has nothing to do with what we call liberalism. She's done an expose, and that's what uh, this picture was from I briefly went to. This was from some time ago. This was her exposing big oil, threatening life around the world. She goes at it in this video from an angle that deals with environmentalism. However, in today's video, I would like to show you a completely different angle that will speak to a group of people who normally wouldn't listen past 30 seconds because they believe people like this are against their interests, when exactly the opposite is true. Now, this is the Empire Files. TV, and if you want to watch that expose, just go down here and find the one I'm circling right here. It has a large, giant octopus on it, um, and you'll also find here many, many places where she exposes the Clintons, and in this list here from YouTube, she not only exposes the Clinton. In fact, her very most recent one, two days ago, was Abby Martin exposes Hillary Clinton. And here's one that exposes John Podesta. So you really need to think long and hard about who your enemies are, by the way. A lot of people think that I'm a liberal because I don't support the current administration. I don't support him because he's not a conservative. Another story for another day. What I would like to talk to you today about is this. You see, in the last administration, one of the more unsung quote-unquote achievements of the Republican Congress was to lift the ban on U.S. export of oil for profit. Now, to understand the ramifications of this, you would have to understand why there was a ban to begin with, which takes us all the way back to 75. See, there was a giant concern at that time of foreign oil holding us hostage because we needed to import so much oil to satisfy the needs. So there was a push that said, okay, no way. We are going to fix this. We are going to become energy independent and we are going to make sure that we do everything we can to keep American oil in America, supporting this country, which is exactly what every other major oil producer had done in the world. Mexico had a company called Pemex. Brazil had Petrobras. Venezuela had uh, PDVSA. Every major oil exporter in the world had some type of a function that operated to protect the interests of the people because it saw oil as the um, possession of the people of that country. This is the only country in the world where that's not the case. Russia is a communist state. 
and it controls all of its businesses, as does China. All the U.S. has is a strategic oil reserve and a bunch of for-profit businesses that now, after 2015, have the ability to sell our oil to anybody they want to. For any reason, they are no... You see, the reason the oil ban was... The export ban was a great idea was because it forced big oil to do things that were good for America regardless of whether it was good for their bottom line or not. Why? Because we were their only customer. Law said, this is what you have to have as your primary function. And what happened over this 40-year period is that every time somebody heard, oh, we found uh, the shale and the, the Bakken and we found the tar sands and we found all this, there was the automatic assumption that it was going to help push us towards energy independence because the more oil we found, the less oil we would need from overseas. You see, that's an assumption, which is no longer true. And I'll show you the statistics to prove it. Now, this is world's top exports. This is 2017, top 15 countries that imported the highest dollar value worth of crude oil. United States, $139.1 billion, right behind China of $162.2 billion. Now, everybody's saying, well, we're finding more oil and we're creating more oil. Yes, and we are exporting it. It's coming right out of the ground. And because there's no longer a ban on exporting it, it's going to India and it's going to China and it's going overseas. Meanwhile, gasoline is going up and up and up and up and up and up here in this country because there is no driving force for these companies to do anything other than to drive the price of oil up. How do we know this? Another chart. 15 countries that exported the highest dollar value worth of crude oil during 2017. United States has eked up right behind Venezuela. Yes, believe it or not, even Venezuela to this day, tiny, tiny country of 30 million people, exports more oil. Now this was end of 2017 numbers. We have since passed them. And we're now up here in the number two, three, four area of oil exports. But we are still importing way more oil than we export. What does this do? What it does is these oil companies now have put the U.S. in an untenable position. This chart here shows the year-on-year -year increase in oil imports from the U.S. Look at China. What this means is that these companies that are not run and controlled by the U.S., because remember, if we did, that would make us evil, terrible socialists. If we had any kind of policy that said, Chevron, Texaco, or Conoco, all you, Texaco, all you Big oil companies, the first thing you have to do is make sure that the needs of the U.S. are taken care of first. Once you do that, then you can export anything. If we said that, that would make us a socialist country, wouldn't it? But we don't. So we let them do whatever the hell they want to do now. And this will be, you mark my words, this will be the thing that destroys America. There will never be energy independence because once big oil these companies create all of these other markets for their oil. They're not going to want to lose those markets regardless of what happens here. Because if given a choice, if things go to hell here and gasoline goes through the roof, they're not going to stop exporting oil to China to help our economy especially if the economies of India and China are doing just fine. They'll be like, eh, well, you know what? Sorry about that, America. It's <laughs> tough luck. We're just going to go ahead and keep pumping and making this money, and uh, thank you for letting us do it. This is what happened in 2014 and 2015 that nobody talks about. And meanwhile, in the uh, this country that is the extraordinary threat to the United States according to uh, Donald Trump, Barack Obama the cabal the standing shoulder to shoulder 
a group of people that have the exact same opinion about Venezuela. Here, stores that were gouging their customers on food, the owners have been arrested. I would like to put out a hypothetical to you guys. I'm not going to waste a lot more of your time. But I would really like you to think about something. If you walked into a car dealership and you, the first thing you said to the salesman was, oh my gosh, I'm without a car. I need a car at, for any reason. I'm in a horrible situation. I need to do whatever I can to get a car. What's the, I, what do you think the chances are of you getting a good deal on that car would be? Absolutely none. No one would ever think about doing that because it's dumb. You don't tell the people that you're buying something from how badly you need their product. Now imagine they already knew. They would give you, this is one of those businesses in America where they can just randomly give whatever price to whoever, legally. Imagine if they did that at the grocery store. If they, if you walked in and you had your cart full of uh, groceries and, of course, with you, you had your two or three kids and the cashier saw that. It's like, well, they have kids. They need that food. We're going to charge them 35% more. We're going to charge them 40, 50% more for diapers, for formula. You'd be losing your mind. But that's the capitalist way. We have laws that, of course, prevent that. But they're socialist. It's government stepping in, telling business, okay, you can do this, but you can't do that. You can discriminate, but you can't discriminate this way. Do you see the fallacy? The logic fallacy now? Meanwhile, places that have done what the U.S. has desired and bowed the knee to the IMF and taken their loans and dollarized and allowed big business to take the lead are ending up exactly where big business wants them. Big business loves huge unemployment rates. Why? Because then they can pay dirt cheap wages, offer no benefits, give just a minimum amount of hours. And I, I don't think my audience has forgotten 2008. And of course, what comes with that? Debt. Untenable, unfixable debt that will be continued to grow more and more and more and more. And this is what's happened in our country. I brought up this chart here just to show it's two years, 2007 and 2017. The difference in product. Now, this is just production. This doesn't have to do with export or import or nothing. When you look at a place like Venezuela versus a place like Canada, Mexico, Saudi Arabia, the United States, you have to understand Venezuela is a tenth the size of those countries. Even less in some cases. In 2007, it was only like 20 million people. We're talking a tiny, tiny, tiny country that at one time was the number three exporter in dollar value of oil in the world. Think about that. And when you look back in the late 90s, when, according to the, the current administration and those attempting to overthrow the current government, that this is what we need to go back to, which is what they want. Mark my words. You ask them. If you would ask Marco Rubio, Pompeo, Trump, Clinton, Obama, you ask any of these people. When was the last time you, th you thought that Venezuela had the right kind of government? They would talk about prior to Chavez. And during that time, Venezuela had 80% poverty. Those pictures of the grocery stores that you see now with the empty shelves, those grocery stores didn't even exist then. What we call a grocery store was only for the most super, super, super elite people in Venezuela in the 90s. Most people in Venezuela lived at that time like what we would see in rural Appalachia. Even though here in this chart, and I'm going to circle this down here for you, and I'll, I'll put these links down here. You can, you can find them for yourself. Gasoline was two cents a gallon. 
two cents a gallon. They pretty much gave it away. And this chart here, and this is the two that I really wanted to, I know it's a lot longer than I normally do a video regarding this topic. But this is U.S. imports from Venezuela of crude oil from 75 to 2015. I would like you to take this chart, and I'll link it, and put it up next to this chart, which is the dollar value of their exports from 80 to 2015. And what you can see clearly is during this time, where we see low inflation rates down here under Chavez and increased revenue, they were making more money exporting less oil to the United States. What was happening here is Venezuela was opening up its markets. And it wasn't, it was trying to not be slave to the United States. And this is why the U.S. had to intervene and say, if we have a country in our hemisphere that is no longer under our thumb that we can't control. You know, that's their, their basis for a threat. Any country they can't completely control either financially or militarily. And I know it's a horrible thing to say about my country. I fought for my country and I love my countrymen, but Washington DC has a problem and it wasn't fixed two years ago. So I will leave it there. But there was a time when people tried to fight this, and they failed. And it's going to be the end of this country, you mark my words. But Abby Martin, well done. Very well done. Um, you do not get braver than this. Standing up to both the left and the right in this country. They both don't like her. And that's how you know you have the right enemies. So... We will continue to support the Empire Files and Abby Martin and help get this word out so that people do know the real news. Thank you so much for your support, guys. Like, share, subscribe.